This is a picture of our research site in northern Norway in Finnmark. On this research site, it is a permafrost site that is actively degrading. And this can have important consequences for future climate. But what is permafrost and how does it affect climate? To look into that, we'll have a look at this map. Permafrost is soil that has been frozen for two or more years in a row. And most of the permafrost is actually frozen for thousands of years. The permafrost in this map is indicated with the purple areas. So we can see here that large areas of Russia and Canada have big areas of permafrost, but also in Norway we have areas with permafrost. And that pre uh, prevents releases from carbon. So what happens when permafrost thaws? We have here a picture of permafrost that is intact, where the, the soil is frozen and when it starts to warm, permafrost starts to thaw. This means that the frozen water in the soil is melting and this is causing the, th uh, the permafrost to thaw and slump. And also this water is creating thaw ponds. These processes have important consequences for the emission of CO2 and methane, both greenhouse gases. CO2 and methane are greenhouse gases that can enhance um, warming. And actually methane is a starker, stronger greenhouse gas than CO2. But when these thaw ponds arise, there can also be regrowth of vegetation, and this could also have important effects. This is our research site in northern Norway, where we can see the intact permafrost in these areas, but also the degradation of permafrost, which is creating thaw ponds, which is the watery areas in the picture. To have a look at um, permafrost thaw in our site. Here you have a picture in 2017 when we set up the research site where you can see the permafrost mounds are still nicely intact while in 2019 we can already see that there's thaw ponds created by permafrost thaw. So this picture indicates that these processes are actually going on in a short amount of time. So we use this hydrological gradient to study like what um, happens to the greenhouse gas emissions when permafrost is thawing. So we have here a gradient from intact permafrost to permafrost that is slumping. Oh. <laughs> okay, should not touch that thing. Um, and the thaw ponds, um, which already also start to have sedges growing into them, grass growing into them. Do not use edges. So we've taken these different characteristics to measure the different greenhouse gases that are arising from these areas. So we have the vegetated palsa that is on the intact permafrost, the thaw slums that are uh, created by the degrading of the permafrost, the thaw ponds that are act, um, underwater, and then thaw ponds where also vegetation is growing back in. And so here we're looking at the greenhouse gases that are arising from these areas. And what we find is that there is a stark difference between these different areas in the greenhouse gases that are emitted. One important thing is that when permafrost degrades, we get higher emissions of methane. And this is a uh, stronger greenhouse gas than CO2. So the degradation of permafrost is starting to emit more methane and this can have consequences for climate. But what we also see is that there's also CO2 taken up um, when the vegetation starts to grow back into these ponds and this happens over summer. But still, we don't have a complete idea of how much uh, greenhouse gases are emitted and this still needs further research to understand all the processes involved. So we are continuing this research, but one thing is starting to be clear, is that to prevent um, more 
greenhouse gases from permafrost thaw. We need to limit climate change and that also helps to protect the unique uh, landscapes that we have.